It was the procession of the dead, the victims of this morning's Fairmount fire, leaving their neighborhood in police vehicles for the office of the medical examiner, but in an orderly, almost ceremonial fashion, almost as if to preserve their dignity in the face of what must have been an utterly chaotic demise. Flames attacking a three-story row home, perhaps caused by a spark from a Christmas tree. It is Philadelphia's deadliest blaze in over 110 years. It is Wednesday night, and the big story on Action News tonight is the latest information about this morning's fire tragedy in Philadelphia. And in fact, authorities have made a change in a key piece of information. The fire department is now saying that 12, not 13 people, died in the blaze, and eight not seven victims were children. So eight children and four adults perished this morning at 869 North 23rd. The structure was owned by the Philadelphia Housing Authority and officials reported that a total of 26 people were living in two apartments. There were four smoke alarms in the building, none of which was working. Family members have identified two of the adult victims, sisters Rosalie McDonald, age 33, and 30-year-old Virginia Thomas. They each had multiple children, but it is unclear how many of them died. We have three reporters in the 800 block of North 23rd Street, the scene of the catastrophic blaze. George Solis will check on the status of several investigations. Dan Quayer has spoken to close relatives of the victims. But first, Bob Brooks has the latest on the fire and its aftermath. Bob, what have we learned with the passage of time tonight? Well, Jim, we're learning quite a bit. That includes details of the response time of the Philadelphia Fire Department. It was rather quick. Also, the cause, again, Jim, they're looking into the possibility that that Christmas tree dried out and went up in flames here, sparking this fatal blaze. Also, we do know that there are still two people in the hospital, an adult and a child, who are now in critical condition. Flames could be seen shooting out of the roof from out of the windows, and neighbors say they heard. I just heard about 6.30, I heard screams. Well, fire officials say it took them 50 minutes to put out the flames at the home on North 23rd Street, but by the time they did, the loss would be immense. 12 people were killed, eight of which are just children, and what was witnessed inside by first responders was utter tragedy. I've been around for 30, 35 years now, and this is probably one of the worst fires I've ever been to. This evening, yellow tarp was put up as the victims were removed from the home, and then we watched a procession led by police to the medical examiner's office. Today, Mayor Jim Kenney said it's time for prayers. Losing so many kids is just devastating. Well, tonight, we know more about the response time. The fire department says the first call was received at 636 this morning. It was answered immediately, and fire personnel were dispatched in, in route at 638. And the first Philadelphia Fire Department company arrived on scene at 640 a.m., less than four minutes from the time of the first call. Tonight, we also know there were no working smoke detectors in the units where the fatalities occurred, and 26 people total were living in the duplex operated by the Philadelphia Housing Authority. And while investigators tried to figure out what went wrong, neighbors say this loss will leave a lasting impression on them forever. How do you think I feel? They not my children, but I feel like they are. When I look at other people's children, I see my kids' faces. Jim, no doubt heartbreaking what has transpired here. A look at the scene, a lot more calm, obviously, than what it was earlier, though. The victims now at the medical examiner's office taken away from here. So many questions yet to uncover about those smoke detectors. Also, why there were so many people inside of this duplex, 26 total. If I'm putting live in the city's Fairmount section, Bob Brooks, Channel 6. Action News, Jim. Thank you, Bob. Also live at the scene tonight is Action News reporter Dan Cuellar. Dan, I know you've been talking to members of the victim's family, and that's helped you learn a lot more about the children who lost their lives today and the adults as well. That's right, Jim. And tonight there are no words to adequately describe the sense of devastation that relatives are feeling right now. For hours, they sought answers on to how and why something like this so terrible and gripping could happen. Entire families gone in just a matter of minutes. Tonight, they have no clear answers. Amidst the pain and the grief, 
A solemn procession of police vans carried the bodies of the victims to the medical examiner's office. Van after van after van carrying the bodies of 12 victims, including eight children, passed through the intersection of 23rd and Parish as relatives and friends looked on in deep sorrow, trying to make sense of a tragedy that for many seemed incomprehensible. I never thought this would happen. Never. So my sisters and my nephews and my nieces are gone. They are deceased. They are never coming back anymore. As relatives and friends hugged and cried throughout today, it was impossible to calculate the pain. Kadira and Jaquita Purife say they lost their three sisters and their eight children. This is one of them they identify as 32-year-old Virginia Thomas. And these are the six children of their sister, Rosalie McDonald, that were also killed three boys and three girls. I work with children, so to know that my nieces and nephews are not here is going to be really hard for me to work with kids again <laughs> and to be around kids that's not my nieces and nephews. And we need your strength right now. Impromptu vigils and prayers were being offered to the victims and their relatives. God, we don't know why this happened to the Lord. You know. But God, I ask you, pray, God, make us strong in this situation. Right now, I don't have no emotion, so I can't really speak about nothing Lord. because I'm still trying to figure out what's going on just like everybody else is. And relatives were at a loss in understanding how none of the smoke detectors were working, which may have saved lives, even after PHA says they were inspected back in May of last year. Angry because I feel like the city should have more safety precautions when it comes to fires as far as mandatory fire extinguishers in the house, making sure we have ladders, especially on the second or third floor. So tonight, still many questions with no answers, but clearly it will be a lengthy investigation. But for now, among other things, family members are asking for people's prayers. Live in the Fairmont section, I'm Dan Coyar, Channel 6 Action News. Jim. Thank you, Dan. Let's switch live to Action News reporter George Solis. George, do we have any idea how long it will be before we have answers to some of those questions about the number of people living in the duplex, why there were no working fire alarms, issues like that? Jim, these are among many of the questions that people have in this community and across Philadelphia tonight, and we do expect some answers from fire officials and the Philadelphia Housing Authority in the coming days, all leading up to that main question. Could this tragedy have been avoided? It's a tragedy that has devastated the city of Philadelphia. This is uh, without a doubt one of the most tragic days in our city's history. Tonight, questions linger surrounding the circumstances that led to the death of eight children and four adults in a duplex fire in the city's Fairmount section. Was there confusion? Was, you know, did something not work and they just write it off that it worked? What is known, the duplex run by the Philadelphia Housing Authority did not appear to have any working smoke detectors. I don't know if they were replaced or tampered with. We have no idea. According to PHA officials, the most recent inspection of the unit in question was conducted on May 5th of 2021. Six lithium battery smoke detectors and three carbon monoxide detectors were all reported to be in working order. Each smoke detector said to last 10 years. The other lingering question, how many people occupied the duplex? We can't make judgment on the number of people living in a house because sometimes people just need to be indoors. Fire officials said at least 18 people lived in Unit B, which occupied the building's second and third floor. PHA officials told Action News as of their last occupancy check in October, 14 members of one family were living in that same four-bedroom unit. Action News learned today the city's Department of Licenses and Inspections per city code does not have a limit on how many people can live in a unit like this one. PHA officials said because of demand for housing and the pandemic, the family could not be moved into a larger unit. Tonight, members of the community remain inconsolable as they wait for answers. But I ain't gonna lie, this is a shocker right here. This, this is a shocker. It's like, it's like a, a day in history for Philadelphia to me. This is bad if it happened anywhere. Yeah, and Jim, tomorrow we do expect more clarity from the PHA about that layout of the duplex and how many people were inside of the unit the time of the fire. We are live in the Fairmount section tonight. George Solis, Channel 6 Action News. Jim. Thank you, George. People turn to their faith tonight to cope with this tragedy. Parishioners and neighbors gathered at St. Nicholas Ukrainian Catholic Church just two blocks from the scene in Fairmount. The church at 24th and Poplar held a vigil to pray for the victims. The only fire in recent times that approached today's death toll was the MOVE bombing and fire in 1985. Eleven people on the MOVE house on Osage Avenue, including five children, died in the blaze. Back in 19. 
1910, 14 people were killed when fire attacked a five-story leather factory on North Bodine Street in what is now Northern Liberties. The victims were 13 firefighters and a police officer. And the city's largest death toll ever happened in 1901 when fire hit a furniture emporium on the 1200 block of Market Street. 22 people were killed, the city's deadliest fire ever. You can find more on the fire, today's fire, on 6abc.com. We've posted local social media reaction and information about how you can get a free smoke alarm.